This is the ultimate apocalypse boot, whether it's zombies, aliens, the P word, societal collapse, AI uprising, Lovecraftian horror, the housing market, whatever it happens to be, this boot was designed to withstand it. So what is this boot? Well, this is the ND3, the third collaboration I've done with NYX. And here's some photos of you that you guys sent into the previous ND releases. But the idea of this boot is to make the most indestructible boot that you can actually wear on a daily basis, all while still being a boot that you could literally live in for an extended period of time during an apocalypse. So we're gonna cut this boot in half and run it through all of our tests, including my personal favorite test, to see if this really is the best apocalypse boot in the whole apocalyptic world, or just some Frankenstein's monster. So when it came to designing an apocalypse boot, most people would assume that the most important part would be the leather or the outsole, but to me, the most important part was the foundation of the boot, the last. If you don't know the last of a boot is what the boot is built around that gives it its unique shape and footprint. So what last did I choose? What did I go with for the apocalypse boot? Well, the last that won World War I and World War II, the Munson last. So where did this Munson last come from? Well, in 1908, the Surgeon General of the Army formed the Army Shoe Board, which focused on standardizing footwear for soldiers. Also that year, Major Edward L. Munson, who was a professor of military hygiene at the time, had shown interest in orthopedics and was selected to lead the board. Then in 1912, Munson publishes a book called The Soldier's Foot and the Military Shoe, which was a four-year study of 2,000 soldiers to find the best shape for a military boot. And the way they ran this was they, they took groups of soldiers and had them fit themselves into a pair of boots. Then they went on a two-day march, eight miles out and eight miles back. And the results were crazy. In just the first day, 30% of the soldiers suffered foot injuries. And by the end of the second day march, 38% of the group was unable to complete the march. And all these injuries were predominantly caused by two main issues. One, the soldiers have no idea how to fit themselves and they err on the side of too tight, which causes all sorts of problems. And two, the boots were just not foot shaped. Because before the months and last, the military were basically using a dress shoe last that was really almond shaped, that squished your toes together, especially pulling your big toe in. So after that study, you can understand why with a 38% failure rate, Munson said this, it will not be disputed that the marching powers of foot troops are a most important factor in the conduction and success of battles and campaigns, and that the army which marches best, other things being equal, is the successful army. So Munson took everything that he learned from the 2,000 soldiers, identified the issues, and started creating the Munson Last. And in 1912, the US military would commission the very first shoe built on the new Munson Last, the 1912 Russet Shoe. Then in 1917, the US enters World War I, and the Munson Last sees the battlefield for the very first time in the M1917 boot which we've actually cut apart a real pair, but you might not have seen it because after it being one of the fastest, actually the fastest growing video we've ever had, YouTube put a quick into that because they demonetized it and they age restricted it. We went from 200,000 views a day to 200 views a day. So we're gonna fix that up, add some additional information and repost it because that video is good as dead. But anyway, the Munson was used throughout World War I and World War II, and it could be argued that it's the most successful and impactful boot last that's ever been made because it was actually designed to fit the human foot. And even if they dropped that failure or injury rate by 5%, that's a significant amount when it comes to an army. So when it came to choosing a last for this boot that you're gonna be walking and hiking all day, every day in, you can see why I went with the Munson last. But that wasn't the only inspiration that we pulled from vintage military boots because the leather that we chose is a brown wax flesh leather. And what that means is there's two sides to leather, the smooth grain side and the rougher flesh side, also called the rough side or the suede side. And most leather products you see are gonna have the grain side out because it's the more pretty side, the smooth side, but it's not as durable as the flesh side. And that grain side isn't as durable for the same reasons it'd be really hard to cut long hair with a razor because all those little suede fibers almost act like individual hairs so that when you try to cut them, they just kind of move out of the way or you just cut a bit of the, the little fiber. All while that structural grain pattern that holds all those loose fibers together are, is protected by being flipped underneath. And with this being a, a wax flesh, they essentially do what the military had each individual soldier do to their boots when they got them, which is apply a heavy water repellent wax over top the entire boots. And this leather is thick too. Most boots that you're gonna see on, the, on store shelves is at max two millimeters thick sometimes 2.5 millimeters, where this leather is three millimeters thick. So you're gonna have a hard time wearing through all those loose fibers. You're gonna literally have to go through a couple millimeters of fibers before you even get to that structural grain pattern. So how good is my leather choice for the apocalypse? Well, to determine that, we're gonna use the Drax chart, where each of the following attributes get a score from one to 10 and are plotted on a radar chart. 
And those are durability, repairability, agility, comfortability, and stability. Just all the, the abilities. So how do I rank this? Well, here you go. And at the end of the video, we're gonna overlay all of them to see if there's any weak spots in this design. But we didn't just use military boots for inspiration. I also pulled some inspiration from a job that might be harder on boots than any other job in the entire world, and that's arborists and linemen. They use their boots to climb stuff all day, every day, which would be really handy in an apocalyptic world just to get a good vantage point to see the bad guys coming, hiding from uh, nuclear bears. So we decided to make this on the lace to toe pattern. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's a pretty obscure pattern for boots. But the biggest differences are that you get one additional eyelet that allows you to really tighten the boot further down the toe box for more stability and a more custom fit. And more importantly, this is a double vamp. So it's like having a toe cap that covers the entire vamp of the boot. So if most boots only have two millimeters of leather around your toes, this boot has six millimeters of leather around your toes. And of course, we had to throw in the Roseanne alignment patch to give you some additional protection on the inside of your foot for climbing mountains, ropes, trees. If you got an open primary and clutch on your Mad Max rig, it just adds an extra bit of protection and it just looks really cool. And then we're also sending them with our boot pocket kit that, shameless plug, you can buy them separately on our site, but we just thought it'd be really cool to have a knife uh, pocket on the side of internal pocket stitch, another uh, pocket for whatever like laces or tools you want to carry with you. And we're also sending it with a full length rose anvil kill tee to give you protection all the way up the entirety of the tongue. And to see if this double vamp actually adds any protection, we did the puncture test on the lace to toe, a single vamp and a regular boot and the results speak for themselves. Quite a bit of difference. But with all that thick leather in the upper making these boots really durable, these boots also got really, really heavy and really stiff. But we found a smart way around that because arguably the second most important thing on a boot is the outsole because it's what makes contact with the actual ground and environment. So I decided to go with a three component outsole. Part one is the Vibram Sierra outsole, it has lots of grip, heavy lugs, and it's just a skin which weighs less than a typical rubber outsole and also increases the agility and flexibility. The next component is the polyurethane foam midsole, which is only made possible because that Sierra outsole is so thin. But this foam midsole has its compromises because it's less durable, but you get way more comfort, more impact resistance for jumping off of stuff. It weighs significantly less than rubber and you still get a little bit of a heel profile so you still get that heel grip rather than just being a straight wedge. And then part number three is a rubber slip sole. So why a rubber slip sole? Well, because once you wear through the outsole and this midsole, you can basically glue anything to the bottom because rubber binds so much better to other materials than, than leather. So the rubber adheres better, it's more flexible, water doesn't damage it, and it's surprisingly puncture resistant because we ran the puncture test and as you can see, it did really well. So with this tactic of trying to reduce the weight while increasing the comfort, flexibility, and agility of this boot with the outsole, we wanted to weigh these boots compared to the rest of the Indy series so we could see if we achieved that. So we weighed them all and as you can see, exactly the same. So it did work because we offset that extra weight that's caused by the upper with the midsole. So at least you get the same weight as the other boots with the additional comfort and flexibility. But the one downside of this sole combination is its durability. So the way we got around that was by making this boot as repairable as possible by the type of construction that we used, which is a 360 stitch down. And a stitch down construction basically means instead of all the structural stitches and layers being tucked into the inside of the boot, everything is flared out and then everything is stitched down together externally, which makes this style of construction more watertight and more dirt tight because the only way stuff is gonna get in is through leaching through the thread itself, everything else is sealed up. But more importantly, it makes these boots more repairable with just basic tools. So that tire tread that you just glued on, you can also stitch on through the stitch down construction to chemically attach it and mechanically attach it to your boot. And the final aspect of this boot that most people, I don't think they would think about or just kind of glaze over is the insole. And when designing this boot, I was really tempted to do a rubber insole for the reasons that we just talked about, but I didn't want to sacrifice my favorite part of this style of boot, which is the leather insole and how it breaks into the shape of your foot, giving you a custom glove-like footprint inside of your boot. So if you compare that to most boots on the market, most boots have, instead of leather even, they just have basically what's compressed paper. So you can see over the course of a couple years in an apocalyptic environment, paper is just not gonna last nearly as long as a big old slab of leather. And that's why wildland firefighters prefer this style boot for basically what is apocalyptic environments. So now let's cut this thing in half and see if this really is the best apocalyptic boot.
All right, we got them cut in half and there's a couple other details in here I think you guys will appreciate. So let's see what's inside. So what's on the inside of a, the Apocalypse boot? Well, besides that really thick layer of veg tan that we talked about, where you can already see my footprint print being pressed into the leather after, I've only had these for four or five days, and I maybe hiked in them for 12 miles, but it's already take, giving you that glove-like footprint. But more importantly, you can see this big old slab of veg tan that makes up the leather shank. And it builds up the arch support significantly. So now that you know every single detail of this, is this the best boot for the apocalypse? Well, for me it is, but I also designed it. But the real world angle on this is that if the world ever gets into a semi-apocalyptic stage, the durable traditionally made boots are gonna be worth their weight in gold. And if not gold, maybe silver, because what's gonna happen is all those more modern boots are gonna sit on shelves in about five years. They're literally gonna melt. And the ones that have been worn are gonna be completely worn out. But as you guys have seen from our historical boot videos, leather can easily last over a hundred years and it can be brought back to life with just a little bit of conditioner. But as for the actual real world application of these, where most of us are gonna be wearing these, they're just one of the most durable, hardest working boots in the entire world that we balanced in some attributes that actually make these a daily driver that you can work in them, you can play in them a weekend or take them on dates. It's just a very versatile boot through the lens of an indestructible boot that you can actually wear. And I think they're just absolutely beautiful. I think this boot really brings everything that we've learned from the Indy series into a single boot. And if you want more uh, me rambling about what I love about this boot and the design behind it and all the lineage of the Indy series, go check out the Rose Amble 2 video on the unboxing of this because I go deep on that. It's like 30 minutes long. And now it's time for my favorite test, which is the post-apocalyptic thrift store test. Would these boots manage to make it out of a zombie-filled thrift store? Let's find out. <laughs> with flying colors so check these boots out via link in my description if you want a pair if they're already sold out i'm sorry we can only do a certain amount per year to not completely overwhelm the nyx production but the indy 4 will be out next year and we usually open up the cancellation slots about a month after the airing of this video so be sure to get on that limited edition email list if you don't want to miss that and thanks again to nyx for letting me do this and especially the nyx production crew for putting up with these wacky designs because these are not fun to make they're very difficult and they put up with it. So thank you guys. See ya. Two, one. Oh, I just thought it was in the air. <laughs> Keep oh, the lid. We got a two piece.